let's do the next question here what did they give us they've given us the temperature at which a gas shows maximum ideal behavior is okay this is a very famous question so the temperature at which gas shows maximum ideal behavior uh, and that too for considerable range of pressures yeah <coughs> this is boils temperature okay so what is boils temperature it means basically this is the temperature at which a real gas exhibits ideal behavior right so this is for a considerable range of pressures so let's come back and do the next question students let's see this question what do they give us here they said the temperature at which a gas shows a maximum ideal behavior is known as okay so they have given us four options right <clears throat> so the temperature at which a gas shows a maximum ideal behavior i need to know first of all before taking the answer i have to be clear what are what is the meaning of all these temperatures so first of all let's start with the last one what is absolute temperature so absolute temperature is that temperature at which you know it's a temperature uh, which we means it's close or it is measured from absolute zero correct absolute temperature is a temperature measured from absolute zero and which is uh, taken in kelvins that is absolute temperature but here they say the temperature at which gas shows maximum ideal behavior okay so this is on uh, temperature which is measured from absolute zero let's come back to critical temperature so what is critical temperature it's a temperature at which you know a gas is in is a critical stage is it's in, in critical stage means what happens here above this temperature what what happens it cannot be liquefied okay again critical temperature is a temperature above it a gas cannot be liquefied by pressure alone means by pressure we using pressure i can't liquefy the gas next what is inversion temperature so inversion temperature is something you know if i take a gas here at this temperature gas is neither heated nor cooled right so is gas is neither heated nor cool or when it is allowed to expand once again inversion temperature basically is a temperature at which joule thomson effect for a given gas changes its sign so what is this here joule thomson effect means what what does it mean basically we are trying to say gas is neither heated nor cooled when they, when it is allowed to expand right without expanding energy so nothing of this we are not speaking anything about this in ideal behavior here we are speaking about the temperature at absolute zero here we are speaking where the gas cannot be liquefied here we said inversion temperature gas can either be heated or not cooled correct now what is boils temperature basically boils temperature is a temperature at which a real gas exhibits ideal behavior so this is the correct option once again boils temperature is a temperature at which a real gas exhibits ideal behavior for considerable range of pressures it is also related with van der waals constant what is the formula basically it is related by van der waals it is uh, related to the formula where that is van der waals constant that is tb is equal to ea by br this is a thing uh, uh, which is uh, means the boils temperature is related to this so once again boils temperature is the temperature at which a real gas exhibits ideal behavior inversion temperature in which gas can either be heated or cooled critical temperature is that where the gas cannot be liquefied absolute temperature is something which is taken as absolute zero so the correct option for this question the temperature at which gas shows maximum ideal behavior is boils temperature right let's come back and do the next question let's see this question now so this is again a grade 11th question let's see this so what do they give me here they say enthalpy of combustion of methane ethane and propane are enthalpy of combustion okay what is enthalpy of combustion basically enthalpy of combustion is denoted by the alphabet delta h c okay so how much is given these are the values which are given respectively enthalpy of combustion of hexane can be predicted as i have to find the enthalpy of combustion of hexane right so what do they give me basically i have uh, they have given me enthalpy of combustion of methane ethane and propane right fine so you, hexane formula is what c6h14 i have to find out enthalpy of combustion of c6h14 hexane is how much i need to find out so how to do how let us see the procedure 
first of all take the enthalpy of combustion of C2H6 see how I am solving it minus enthalpy of combustion of methane how much do I get how much is enthalpy combustion of uh, ethane it is minus 368.84 minus of minus 210.8 how much do I get I get minus 157.6 kilocalories this is done now next one the third one is propane now take out this uh, <coughs> from this value let's see step 2 enthalpy of combustion of propane C3H8 minus enthalpy of combustion of ethane see because I have to get for hexane isn't it so minus 526.2 minus of minus 368.4 how much do I get I get minus 157.8 kilo calories right now why did I do this because now the average enthalpy of combustion of hexane I can take because together only you know hexane is C6H14 now you see here from C2H6 I've got this value of subtracting after taking this I've got this now I can write average delta H C for C6H14 is equal to delta H C C3H8 plus three times in after balancing H C of CH2 why did I do this because I need the value of this I take because I need this value so I have taken this out so when I solve this how much do I get I get minus 50 526.2 plus 3 into minus 157.7 so when I do this multiply add and everything right so I uh, get an answer take just uh, solve the students 56 yeah so when I solve this particular equation right so after solving this everything I got a correct answer of minus 993.3 kilo calories per mole so do the calculation students so I've done it and finally the answer which I got is option C let's come back and do the next question so let's come back and read the next question students uh, a bit lengthy equation but let us understand the concept so what do they give us it is more convenient to or it is more convenient to obtain the molecular weight of an unknown solute okay by measuring the freezing point depression and by measuring the boiling point elevation because right so let us see the option uh, why are we taking that to calculate why are we taking freezing point or why are we uh, taking the boiling point elevation by because let's see first of all first option is freezing point depression is a colligative property whereas boiling point elevation is not wrong isn't it so colligative properties we have four one is uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure then we have the elevation boiling point then depression freezing point and osmotic pressure so the first one is wrong next option freezing point depression are larger than boiling point elevations for the same solution yes this is the correct answer isn't it right so right so let's see whether third and fourth are also related freezing point depressions are smaller than boiling point elevation wrong isn't it here we said it is larger third option is wrong freezing point depression depends more on the amount of the solute than boiling point elevation right so basically the correct answer the relevant answer related to uh, a question is freezing point depression are larger than boiling point elevations for the same solution that's what we have marked this let's come back and see the uh, next question solutions chapter of grade 12 wisdom let's see the next question of the uh, chapter let's see which question we are going to get